In this episode, we explore the highway to Hyden on our trek back to Perth. You gotta pay it because the ranger is right there. And the old blue nav. We tick the iconic wave rock off our bucket list. We also check out some lesser known spots along the way. So sit back and enjoy as we show you our inland journey. Previously, The road's really aggressive. In our last episode, we had done a U-turn at Esperance and we're exploring the stunning coastline from Quaggy Beach to Hopetown. We saw some pretty old buildings and climbed up a cool peak. Hey guys, so I just left Hopetown this morning. We're gonna try to trek up to Hyden, Way Brock, making our way back to Mandra for a couple of days. So we'll see what the inland Hopetown to Mandra has to offer. Yep, let's go. is going on? What's going on? Generally when we have a problem with the nav, we just ignore it and the problem goes away. And the engine light is now gone. Holding on. Good old nav. Our first stop after leaving Hopetown was to Lake King to stretch our legs around the outdoor tractor museum. There were some unique creations here. These farmers of ours were quite smart back in the day. We even saw a tractor nicknamed Bigfoot. Not far up the road, we pulled over to check out this stuck truck. Look at this stuck truck. You think someone would have helped him? Got the winch out, got that poor bloody fella down, but no, he's stuck, he's stuck there, and look, he's rusting away. How long has he been stuck there, Amy? I don't know, poor fella. If we were here, we would have winched him out. But looks like he's going to find help or something. It was then full steam up and into Hyden. Our first spot was to the rock formation called Hippo's Yawn. We thought it did resemble a somewhat yawning hippo. Even in the back of the rock, it looked like tonsils. <laughs> We then moved around to the main attraction, Wave Rock. Hey guys, so just here at Wave Rock. Um, I think we thought it would be like free to see or including your national parks pass, but it's not. They make you pay $12 to park in the car park to go see it, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. Um, and you gotta pay it because the ranger is right there. In the old blue nav. Yeah, pimped out Navara and he's going around and checking people. We're already seeing three people with fines, so yeah, let's pay you twelve dollars to go see the rock. Proof, just in case. On a more positive note, since it's not zoned as a national park, it is in fact a dog friendly attraction, which is great. It was a lot bigger than we imagined. Of course, we each had to get that tourist snap of surfing the rock. It's what you do when you're here, right?
We then ventured to the top to check out the view from above. We decided to head back to go grab a family shot in front of the rock. <laughs> After patiently waiting for 10 minutes, we were able to grab the shot. We're still here and the ranger is behind us. <laughs> Plus we saw another ranger over there, handing out tickets. Pay your dues, people. Pay your dues, people. <laughs> right across the road was our next spot to see, Lake Magic. Why is this place called Lake Magic, you ask? Well, it's got a high concentrate of salt in the water, which enables you to quite literally float effortlessly. It's a feeling you have to experience for yourself. You quite literally can't sink in this pool. We floated around for a good while before rinsing off and continuing on. Our next spot was just over 20 minutes west of Hyden along a pretty tame dirt road. We were at Buckley's Breakaway. A short two minute stroll from the car park and we saw these magnificent breakaways. A stunning natural phenomenon. Not only were they amazing from the air, they were just as impressive from the ground up close with all the different shades of colors. Hey guys, so just here at the Buckley's Breakaway. Um, it's just outside of Hyden. So many flies. It's pretty cool. It's like a mini breakaway. It's like the one at Cooper Pedy. So if you're near Hyden, well worth the detour to come have a look. What do you reckon, Kurt? So many flies. Just a few. But yeah, she's pretty cool. We left the breakaways en route to our campsite for the night. We picked what looked like it'd be a goodie from good old Wiggy Camps. The weather wasn't looking the best as we tracked into the small town of Kulun. Little did we know that we had in fact begun the Tin Horse Highway route. The Tin Horse Highway started out as a community marketing to promote the Kulin Bush races, but had now become one of Western Australia's most popular self-drives. All up, there was around 70 Tin Horse creations along the drive and scattered throughout the township. It definitely made for an afternoon giggle as we made our way into the free RV stop in the centre of town. We found a nice spot to set up, had a nice free hot shower in the amenities block and then headed across the road to the pub. Check out that sky! Magical! We had planned to have dinner at the pub, but unfortunately for us, the kitchen was closed. 
so we just settled for a few beers before retreating back to the van. The next morning we had an intruder in the van and Rusty was straight on the case. It was a massive blowfly which had to be taken care of. After a bit of teamwork we managed to get him out of the window. <laughs> All hitched up, we left Kulin, slowly making our way to Mandra. We didn't really see or pass through anything newsworthy. We found a nice quiet gravel pit, which we parked up the back, updated our paper map and had one last campfire before returning back into proper civilization. Well, join us next time as we return to Perth and play tourists for a couple of days. Love our videos. Why not help support us on Patreon? Even just a couple of dollars each month. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button if you are new. Cheers, legends.